I'm not a stupid person. No doubt many of you will disagree when you understand the situation in which I find myself. I had the arrogance to believe that I was observant and insightful. If this were true, things would have happened completely differently. From the very beginning, I knew Carol was capricious. She was ready to do anything to satisfy her desires. That's exactly what she did when we were dating. This single-mindedness of hers in pursuit of a goal seemed almost admirable. When she decided she needed me, she pursued her goal relentlessly. This was, of course, flattering, but she was also very attractive, intelligent, and had a wide range of interests. She had a very beautiful body, and this immediately attracted attention to her, and then her other qualities were revealed. She bought clothes that were short, low-cut, and tight-fitting. Of course, men noticed and admired her, and women envied her. She watched her diet to make sure she was attractive. None of my assurances convinced her she needed verification from outside attention. We had a good marriage, but our blissful, perfectly happy marital existence was disrupted when I took a job at a computer consulting firm that involved a lot of out-of-town travel. There was nothing we could do about it. There were few jobs, let alone good jobs, and we couldn't pay the bills with Carol's income alone. Although we didn't have children, it was in our plans. One evening on a trip, I saw two gorgeous young blondes showing off in Red Omar. They walked slowly and swayed gracefully. I sat at the table alone and waited for my food, alone with my thoughts. I was lonely. People were talking, laughing, perhaps touching each other while talking. Sometimes I noticed that someone was looking at me. As they walked by, blondes cast me sidelong glances, as if meeting my gaze would explain why I was alone. When you're happily married and on the road, the emptiness of the experience is easy to recognize. You can call your wife every evening. What can you say about your day? I had lunch alone, went back to work, and realized that most of the sales information could be transferred to the marketing department. You can tell her that you had dinner at a restaurant last night and went back to your room to watch TV. You ask how her day was without you. At least she has friends at home. You are alone. You will see several attractive young women during the trip. You can't date them. Even if they were willing to save them from loneliness, it would be unfair to them. There is no telling where the relationship will lead, and it would also be unfair to the wife. In a hotel bar, being around other living, breathing, talking, laughing, people is the best reminder that there is life to be a part of someday. Sometimes there is an opportunity to dance with someone. What a refreshing change it is to be able to chat. This does not obligate you to anything, but this is human contact. Perhaps I'm exaggerating a little. I remember three evenings in order to distinguish them with sufficient clarity from all other formless evenings. Carol noticed the impact travel had on me. Every now and then she would slip something into my suitcase to cheer me up. Sometimes a chocolate bar, sometimes a note to remind me that she missed me too. One day she left a note that promised me a surprise. It was my third week in Chicago, and I had dinner at the hotel restaurant. While waiting for the onion soup, looking at the other customers and wondering what they thought about the lonely guy, I heard a woman's voice to the left. Simon, Simon Newsom. I turned around to see an attractive brunette, 5'4", early 30s, with a wedding ring on her left ring finger. Stupid, isn't it? This glance to check is almost involuntary. Sorry, I can't remember the face. Do I know you? No, you don't know. My name is Annie Carson. My old friend Carol Newsom invited me to dinner with you today. She had a different name when we were friends in colleague G, but I hear that she has since married a handsome guy. Do you mind if I join you? Of course not. I was stunned. Carol said you spend a lot of time alone and she wanted some company for once. Wow, she's great. Yes, you are lucky. Marvelous. I think this is the most incredible gift I have ever received. You don't even know half of it. She harassed me until I changed my schedule to meet you here. Carol can't take no for an answer. It took her five phone calls. It's nice to feel her care. This is true. You know, you have a nice smile, Simon. Don't forget to tell Carol this. I'll have to thank her properly when I get home. She mentioned it. 
She said she'll be waiting for you in her little black nighty when you get home. An attractive man approached our table. Men don't interest me, but I know how to evaluate men. Simon, this is my husband, Richard. I stood up and we shook hands. You seem surprised, Simon, she said. Did you really think that your wife was going to set you up with a beautiful seductress while you were alone and far from home? She giggled. Richard is here with us. You didn't have any indecent thoughts, did you? Of course not, I muttered. You are very emotional. Carol was right. I spent one of my best evenings on the road just having dinner with Annie and Richard. It wasn't just that I was dining with nice company. Carol was caring enough to make everything happen. When I returned home, I thanked her profusely. On another trip, a memorable incident occurred. I had just finished swing dancing with a woman in her 40s whose husband was more interested in drinking than dancing. They were both grateful that I danced with her, although for completely different reasons. It's so nice to dance with an attractive young man, she told me. I'm not that young, and you're not old at all. You look like you just graduated from college. That makes me think you may have had too much to drink. She laughed. It was an attractive laugh. I'm 35. College was quite a long time ago. She looked back at her sleeping husband. If I were a few years younger and Fred weren't here, I would show you an unforgettable night. I'm married and I won't forget about it. She let out a long, contented sigh. Your wife is a happy woman. I just want to go home. But you helped make my absence more bearable. Thank you for dancing with me. Maybe Fred feels some of his wife's absence. I wish I could, she said, reluctantly returning to him. I returned to my glass. I'm not as good looking as she said. The only thing that's notable about me is that I have a pretty good physique. I looked up from my glass and saw a bright red-haired girl carrying a glass and purposefully moving in my direction. Some lucky person will receive some very nice attention. It turned out to be me. Hi, I am Sandy. She extended her hand to me. You are good at dancing. Do you mind if I sit down and talk for a while? Mind. She was the most gorgeous woman I have ever seen on the road. She was a fantasy come true. Of course, if you want. With pleasure. This was a significant understatement. I rarely leave the house and I thought it would be nice to talk and maybe dance with a nice young guy. Either I inhabited someone else's body or someone stamped young guy on my forehead. She was no more than 25 years old and could have had any guy. Why did she come to me? Well, you're lucky. I can dance and talk. Sometimes at the same time. And a sense of humor, too. Just the kind of guy I'd like to spend some time with. Having said this, she touched my hand for a moment. I didn't know what to answer. There were younger, prettier guys there. How did she focus on me? My curiosity and suspicion resulted in a silence that threatened to drag on. She saved the day. Why don't we dance? I stood up and extended my hand to her. We went out onto the dance floor to jump around a bit. When the dance ended, the orchestra switched to something slow. I tried to go back to the table, but she grabbed my left arm and put her arm around my neck. Fine, I can dance slow dances. Sandy didn't seem to realize it was a dance. She turned her head towards me so that her right cheek was pressed against mine. She released my left hand with her right and also wrapped it around my neck. She moved closer, and suddenly my breasts grew, although in the wrong direction. When she moved her hips, it stopped being a dance and became a frottage. This made me feel very uncomfortable, especially when I realized that if this continued, I would likely exhibit a socially undesirable reaction. Luckily, the song ended before I gave up, and I was able to get back to the table. If I were alone, we would immediately go to my room. I would capitulate to this irresistible beauty and throw caution to the wind. But I was not alone, and this presented an insurmountable obstacle for me. You know my name, but I don't know yours. There may be something exciting and dangerous about it, but I think I'd rather know your name if you're willing to introduce yourself. I'm Simon. I find you very attractive, Simon. Why? Maybe she's just a hot, lonely girl who wants sex. But the question remained, why me? My radar was activated. Something was wrong here. 
although I couldn't put my finger on what it was. In the meantime, I had nothing to lose by accepting the compliment. Thank you. It's very nice of you. I'm very serious, Simon. She took my hands in hers. I would love to spend the night with you. Why? Am I some kind of idiot? A stunningly beautiful woman wants to spend the night with me, and my reaction is to look around for a hidden camera. However, it didn't matter. Even if my radar had not been activated, this invitation had a predetermined permission. I'm drawn to you too, Sandy. Hell, so are all the men here, and probably quite a few women. But I'm married. I know. I saw the ring. Obviously, you're here alone. You left on business. It's just a fling. She'll never know. What's bad about it? I'll know. It doesn't matter whether she finds out or not. Relax. You are here alone. You spend all your time on the road. You deserve a distraction. And I'm sure I'll have a good time, too. Sorry, Sandy, I can't. I'm not even really sorry. It's just not my thing. As you wish, Simon. As you wish. I can be unforgettable. She spoke sincerely and seductively. She knew how to get to the man. It is quite possible that she has never been refused in her life, still. I made several promises when I got married, and one of them concerns this situation, Sandy. When I make a promise and it is within my power to keep it, I keep it. You are the most beautiful, sensual, seductive woman I have ever met, including my wife. God knows I will remember the missed opportunity, but I will not break my word. She seemed very surprised, and yet she seemed pleased with something. I couldn't explain it, but I'm sure that's what I saw. I'm very sorry to hear that, but I understand. Your wife is a happy woman. You are the second woman to say this today. Can I get a review to take home? What a delightful laugh she had. Don't worry, I will outline everything in my report, and a sense of humor, too. You will need the correct spelling of my name. As pleasant as this joke was, I apologized and returned to the room. To someone watching from the outside, it would appear that Carol was the dominant partner in our relationship. Come to think of it, Carol probably thought so too. She usually got her way. It's not that I didn't have the courage to stand up to her. The thing is, the things we disagreed about were usually much more important to Carol than to me. For example, I don't know why, but I can't stand the greenery in the house. It's a great color for the woods, but I don't think it should be indoors. Even though Carol knew it, her heart was on the lime green sofa. To me, it was vomit green confirmation of bad taste, but it made her happy, and I left often enough to be okay with it. I must have seemed even more spineless when it came time for Carol to change the car. Carol dreamed with all her heart of having a Ford Explorer SUV. She claimed that the planet would be able to digest it because I was controlling a hybrid. I did not agree with her, but in the end I decided that this was not an issue on which I could not concede, like I said. Carol was relentless when she wanted something, but to her surprise, she discovered that I was not a complete weakling at everything. If the matter was important enough to me, I could be more than intractable. I think she came to this conclusion the day she told me she wanted to buy super expensive lingerie. I told her we couldn't afford it. She immediately rushed into battle. I know we can afford it. You can write off your expenses for the company. Below a certain amount, they don't even require receipts. This is theft. They expect honesty. Don't be so naive. Everyone does it. But not me. Don't give me so much trouble. You always give me so much trouble. I ask for something trivial, and you get in my face with this honesty, no matter what. Do you hear what you say? No need to shout, she said. Do you think this is a scream? Keep it up and you'll hear screams. You are petty, capricious, cruel, and incredibly selfish. You want me to give up my self-respect for a fucking nightgown? I know how you can afford it. Divorce me and you will get enough money to buy whatever you want. You're always pushing the boundaries, Carol. And this time, you've gone too far. What are you, a teenager? Calm down. It's not that important. Lord, don't talk about divorce over a nightgown. Let's talk about escalating the dispute. Where did the divorce come from? 
When you tell me that I have to break my beliefs in order for you to be happy, the only logical answer is that you have to be happy without me, because I won't. Sorry for asking. I didn't think so. Of course, I wouldn't want you to break your beliefs. I just didn't think about it that way. Please, lingerie is not as important to me as it is to you. I'll prove it to you. Carol began to unbutton her blouse. It was just weird. She took off her blouse and bra. Her arguments seemed a little more convincing to me. Now I'll burn it. I want to show how much it doesn't matter to me. I grabbed my bra, but she dodged it. This is stupid, Carol. I'm going to burn it. I ran after her and she ran across the bed to escape. I realized that I am no longer angry. I managed to grab her and she started laughing. It was infectious. We buried the hatchets. Then I remembered this argument. I couldn't believe how far she was willing to go to get what she wanted. I believed that this was a fight which she had decided she could not win, and it would be better for her future claims if she retreated as quickly and completely as she could. Maybe I'm just a suspicious guy. Of course, I myself was surprised by this argument. She was right about the escalation. I jumped from persuasion to threats of divorce. Was it all disproportionate? More likely. Am I serious? I don't know. My reaction was intuitive and not logical. I hoped she didn't think she could always win an argument just by taking her clothes off. Such disputes happened infrequently and were unimportant compared to the good times. We are with Carol. We took advantage of the weekend by spending as much time together as possible. By no means was this a naked, stay-at-home weekend. I didn't marry her to be a fuck toy. I appreciated her friendship, intelligence, and generosity, except when she tried to get something out of me. The movies, museums, games, and dinners I had to spend alone out of town were made up with her on weekends and on those rare days when I was working on site or was free due to a lack of assignment. I thought we were happy. I may even have been right about this, despite subsequent events that cast doubt on this belief. One day on the weekend, lying naked and sweaty, she surprised me. Some girls at work told me that their husbands dream of seeing them with another man. What about your fantasies? No? Is this what their husbands really dreamed of? Some even more than they imagined? Really? I do not understand this. Why not just stay alone if you want to be with others? They say they are excited to see their wives having so much fun. Wouldn't you like to see your sweetheart in ecstasy? I chuckled and lifted the blanket. Does this idea seem to interest me? Maybe you don't want to just watch. Maybe you'd like to join. Are you asking permission? Maybe. Ask your next husband. The current one has no interest. If I wanted us to have sex with someone, we would be alone. God knows I've had a lot of opportunities along the way, but that's not something I'll ever do. You just don't know when to stop, do you? Oh, calm down. I'm just kidding. Some girls told me about this, and I thought it would be fun to tease you. Are you always so serious? Don't you understand jokes? Again, my suspicion told me that she sensed that she had gone too far, that I was on the verge of unbridled escalation, and she decided that it would be unwise to press the issue. On the other hand, sometimes I can be too serious. In fact, if I found out that you were cheating on me, I would very seriously think about leaving you. At least I would get some serious revenge somehow. I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. I'm not interested in anyone but you, Carol. You better not do this. I wanted to understand this better. Is this just a fantasy, Carol? Is this something I was overreacting to? I wouldn't want you to be afraid to express your fantasies. Fantasies exist only in the imagination. Everyone has fantasies. About? What do you dream about? Those fantasies that almost all heterosexual men have, being with two women, one of whom is you, but I will never do anything to make it happen. No, you won't. And no, it was not a fantasy. I told you I was just fooling around. But listen, if it makes you feel better, I'll burn my bra. This is not a solution to all problems. I'm just fooling around. Without any convincing evidence to the contrary, I did not continue. It was a Friday night in Evansville, Indiana, and I couldn't get on a plane until the morning. This was my fourth week on the road, and I was glad to be able to spend the week at home. Not only was I tired, but I was also in pain. My teeth have been hurting for the past three days, and today I picked up a prescription for Percocet, 
and an antibiotic from my local dentist. Pain wears me down and affects my juckment. It is much more difficult to concentrate due to pain. Work was finished, and I had dinner at my hotel restaurant. It's not that I didn't eat, but I was supposed to take Percocet with food. Suddenly, a pair of female hands covered my eyes from behind, a pair of breasts pressed against my back. I felt her soft hair touch my neck as she spoke softly into my ear. Imagine that we met here strangers. I immediately recognized this voice. Nicole, what are you doing in Evansville? It was too easy. She pretended to pout. Travel for work. I'm coming back tomorrow. What about you? Me too. I've been working here for about four weeks now. You know how often I get sent away. She knew because she was my wife's best friend. Does Carol know you're here? Did she send you? I don't think she even knows I'm out of town. Have you eaten yet? Would you like to join me? I don't know. I do not want to be a burden. It was a very pleasant surprise. I liked Nicole. She was fun to be with. Even if it wasn't, it was much better than being alone. This turned out to be much better. Dinner paled in comparison to the sparkling conversation. Did Carol send Nicole, like she sent Annie, just so I could have another good evening? What a caring wife I have. After dinner, we danced a little. There were some slow dances, but Nicole didn't take the same liberties as Sandy. We returned to the table and ordered a cup of coffee. Nicole, I really enjoyed your company this evening. I hope I meet you again when I'm on the road. I also know what it's like to be alone on the road. No, you're lonely and sexy. I bet you don't often have dinner alone. Do you take sugar or cream? Sugar, I said. We sat for a while, sipped wine, and talked. I started to feel strange even though I had only drunk one glass. I'm not feeling very well, Nicole. I wonder if I should have stayed away from alcohol after taking Percocet. I didn't read the damn instructions. I think I better go back to my room. I'm sorry the evening ends so early. Hope you're feeling better. I started to get up but felt dizzy and fell back into my seat. I'll help you get back to your room. I reluctantly accepted help, but my legs were shaking, and I felt uncharacteristically compliant. I accepted her offer. The side wall of the elevator really helped her keep me upright. She took my key card and showed me to my room. I felt strange, not sick, just weird. If it weren't for the extreme unsteadiness of my legs, I would have thought I was just a little tipsy. Percocet is a drug, isn't it? Thank you for helping me get back to my room. It was so great. She helped me get to bed. Are you feeling well? You're acting a little strange. I feel great. I had a big smile that just wouldn't go away. Let's dance. I tried to get up, but my legs wouldn't obey me. Be careful, she said. You are so cute. You are also very cute. She kissed me on the cheek. Thank you. I hugged her tightly. It must have been too long because at some point I realized I was hugging her and didn't remember when I started. I think I better put you to bed. No, I can do it myself. I lifted my leg with my hands, fell off the bed, and started laughing. For some reason that escapes me now, I found this hysterically funny. Of course you can. She sat down next to me on the floor and took off my shoes and socks. I was of little use. She took off my jacket with difficulty, stood up and hung it on the chair. Then she came back and helped me back onto the bed. After unbuttoning my pants and lowering my fly, she pushed me onto my back and tried to take off my pants. I couldn't help it. You're trying to seduce me. I also thought it was very funny, and I laughed until I lost my breath. I don't like the way you look. I'll stay for a while in case you need help. Cold. I just don't think I can leave you alone. Cold. I heard her walking around and most of the lights went out. After some time, I felt her in the bed. She moved closer to me and covered us with a blanket. I will stay here with you and take care of you. Cold. I was in a surprisingly good mood. I usually can't stand it when I don't have complete control over a situation. But for some reason, it didn't bother me now. She pressed closer and then I realized, Hey, you don't have any clothes on. I don't want to crumple. It's a good idea. 
Just relax and rest. That's exactly what I did. I think I got some sleep. I woke up to Carol's kisses. I thought she wasn't there, but I must have been confused. Sometimes the days are confusing. Carol was especially passionate today. I think separation makes the heart grow fonder. And Lustier. My God. I don't remember the last time I felt such a need. She grabbed my buttocks and pulled me towards her. I felt everything. I smelled everything. I heard everything. Never before have my feelings been so acute. Carol, this is amazing. I've never felt so close to you. I'm not Carol. I'm Nicole. What am I doing? How did it happen? This was wrong. It's okay, Simon. Everything is fine. Everything was okay. I moved forward and was enveloped in a warm, sensual, and luxurious body. Carol Nicole was tired of this pace. Faster. It was more than a proposal. Faster. I can't. Okay, let's try it your way. As far as I could tell, my method worked quite well. It was tiring. I was asleep. It was morning. Sunlight streamed into the room. I stretched. I opened my eyes and looked at Carol. Nicole, who was downstairs. What the hell are you doing? What are you doing here? It's okay, Simon. Everything is not okay. I pulled the sheet over my lower body. My blood pressure jumped. My skin flared up. Everything is fine. You seduced me and I stayed the night. Did I seduce you? I don't... It was wonderful. I'm really sorry. I... I don't know what came over me. Please forgive me. I never intended to do this. I don't want to say there's anything wrong with you, but I love Carol. Oh, God, what have I done? Do not apologize. You couldn't seduce me if I didn't want you to. I'm not upset at all. I feel great. Deep sadness and shame overwhelmed me. I spoke with such conviction, almost arrogance, about the impossibility of ever doing it, and I did it. It didn't matter that I failed Carol, but what was worse was that I failed myself. I was not the person I thought I was, and it devastated me. I'm just another asshole, like all the other assholes. Nicole tried to console me, but she lacked conviction. She seemed more pleased than sympathetic. What should I do? Have I really lost Carol? Did I really cost her Nicole's friendship? For now, I have decided to focus on returning home. She sat on the bed naked, pleading. So we'll repeat it? No, this shouldn't have happened. If I do this again, it will be even worse. I don't understand why I did this last night. The least I can do is stop doing wrong. Sorry, I'll just behave the right way. Nicole didn't answer, but her behavior changed. She was very positive and accepted the situation. But now for some reason she seemed sad. I think I can live with the guilt myself. But if Carol finds out, it will hurt her even more. You are her best friend. What do you think? I do not know what to tell you. I'm sure you guys will figure it out eventually. She seemed to want to say something else, but held back. There was pain in her eyes. Perhaps regret. Are you okay? I moved to give her a reassuring hug but the sheet fell and I realized we were both naked. What can I do to fix everything? She smiled, leaned over and squeezed my hand. Everything is fine with me. You don't have to do anything. Nicole and I spoke just long enough to discuss the details of the trip to the airport. Fortunately, we did not sit together on the plane. I had the whole flight to decide whether I would tell Carol or not. Since there was no good choice, I did not come to any decision. From the airport, I took a taxi home. Until I decide, I'll have to act like everything is fine. Carol greeted me enthusiastically. Let's unpack your things, put them away, and then I want to get you cleaned up, cutie. As we unpacked, the choice was made for me. I heard her scream. What the hell is this? I turned around. She was holding blue lace bikini panties in her hands. I blushed. Whose is this? Where? I didn't answer right away. Don't try to make up some story. You got it, buddy. No story, no excuses. I can't even explain it. 
I myself don't understand what happened. Who is she? Nicole. Did you have sex with my best friend? You make me sick. Get out. Stay in the guest room. I don't even know if I can talk to you again. Get out. Everything went better than I expected. I was still married, at least for now. On Monday, I went to the doctor for a checkup. I had no reason to believe that Nicole had any illnesses, but it would be foolish not to be as safe as possible at this late date. Carol didn't talk to me for three days. She was still angry when she spoke. I decided not to divorce you, but I'm angry, and I know what I need to get through this. I'm going to take revenge. I'm going to find someone to have sex with, and I want you to be there when I do it. Carol, two wrongs don't make a right decision. For me, this is the right decision. I'm just going to use strangers. You had sex with my best friend. I did not want to. I didn't have any plan or intention. It just happened. Would you rather for me to wait until some stranger starts making advances toward me before I let it happen? I'm not trying to soften the severity of what I did. I'm saying that methodical planning takes cheating to another level, beyond what I was doing. As for observation, there is no chance of that. What if I insist? What if I need it to get through this? Otherwise, I won't be able to stay married. I started to fuss. This is your fantasy, isn't it? You've already talked about this before. Do you think you need this to forget about my behavior, or are you just using this as an excuse to force your fantasy down my throat? What if you go too far? How will it end when one of us gets so far that we break up? Is this your idea of how to get through this? You speak impudently for someone who has fallen so low. I speak as if I love you and don't want to go down a path where it will be impossible for us to be together. Is there really no limit? Everything is fine. We'll make up if you watch. She seemed more disappointed than angry. At least you recognize my right to get even. I didn't even remotely say that. There is no right to do wrong. I just said that I have no right to blame you. No matter how much I've ruined our relationship, I think what you're planning will only make it worse. I will let you know. You will know when this happens. Because until then, you will have nothing from me. This was wrong. I mean, there was something inappropriate about this whole situation. It took her three days to decide on the appropriate action. But she also told me that if she ever caught me cheating, she would take revenge. But she was quite insistent that I watch her, and she had said so before. She seemed disappointed that she did not get this concession from me, although her behavior before and after was angry. How long will I be cut off? This was a tactic she had used in the past to get her way. If her revenge is swift, it will probably be because she had someone in mind all along. Besides, she didn't really respond to any of my arguments. This was typical when she was trying to get something. But in other circumstances, she thought carefully about my words, responded thoughtfully, and sometimes agreed with me. What I had was inconclusive evidence and a bad feeling. I decided that I needed to gather more information to find out what was really going on. Maybe she was going to pretend to be a liar to teach me a lesson. But then she wouldn't insist that I watch, unless she was prepared for me to dissuade her. Maybe that was exactly what she said, revenge. Maybe she had this all planned out in advance and was just looking for an opportunity to be with him in a way where she couldn't be blamed. Maybe she had an affair with him while I was out of town, and it was staged so that if I caught her in the future, she could say, it was just one time with my boyfriend for revenge, and I'm sorry. Maybe it was something so twisted and insidious that I couldn't even imagine it. I decided the only way to find out was to tape them so I could hear what she said and see how she behaved. I needed to act quickly. I had no idea when she would do it. I went to my office in the basement and searched the internet for information and specifications for surveillance equipment. I also looked for local stores to stock the equipment because I didn't know if I had time to wait for it to ship. Shortly after Carol left home, I went about my business. Most of the day was spent setting up the cameras and wiring and hiding them. I hid cameras in our bedroom, guest bedroom, and office. These were the most likely places for a date. I guess I could have installed cameras in the living room and rec room, but I was trying to figure out what it was doing, not creating a spy network. Perhaps I focused on this to distract myself from the guilt and worry about the damage done to our marriage. 
On Friday afternoon, Carol called me at the office and told me not to worry about being home for dinner. She said that I should spend the night somewhere else and that she would call me when it was safe to return home. I didn't have to do anything. The programs were already connected to my network and the recording would be motion activated. This espionage was not an adventure. This was what I felt I had to do to understand the situation. I went to a restaurant for dinner and then got a motel room. Sitting in my room staring at the blank TV screen, I wondered what the hell I was doing. What kind of man would allow his wife to do what mine is doing now? Weakling. Someone who doesn't deserve to have their feelings spared. I grabbed the keys and ran out the door. I was going to go home and stop this. I would grab him and throw him out of the house. I got so far as to put the key in the ignition before I started thinking again. What will I tell Carol? If you cheat on me, I will leave you. The problem is that I will also have to say, if you don't forgive me for cheating, I will leave you. The juxtaposition of these two sentences was absurd. But that was not all. Suppose today I managed to prove my masculinity. What's to stop Carol from doing this the first night I'm out of town? Or every night I'm out of town for that matter? I couldn't quit my job to sit at home and watch her all the time. Either way, it wouldn't be a life for either of us. Then she will tell me what she did. The only difference is that I didn't willingly stand by to let it happen. Or maybe he won't say. She'll just keep doing it until she gets caught. I took the key out of the ignition. Confronting her tonight was not the solution. At best, it will delay her revenge. At worst, this could make the situation even more destructive to the continuation of our marriage. I got out of the car and returned to the room. No suitable solution came to mind. I tried to watch TV, but it was difficult for me to concentrate. I felt a sense of foreboding. At about nine o'clock, I fell into a restless sleep. I woke up at eight, got dressed, and went to breakfast. Carol called me on my cell phone just after nine. She was cheerful, almost cheerful. Now you can go home. I'm going to go shopping and won't be back until this evening. You're in luck today, big guy. See you later. She didn't even wait for an answer. As far as she could tell, the matter was successfully completed. I checked out and went home. I sat down in front of the computer and checked the VCR. Only the one in the bedroom managed to detect any significant time. He didn't use it for a full eight hours. I think they got some sleep. I rewinded the film for about an hour and turned it on. Many men tell stories about how they saw their wives doing this and it turned them on. For me, it was an emetic. I saw Carol heading towards the bed from the bathroom. None of us will be lucky today. She sat down on the bed and picked up the phone. Was that when she called me? Hello? Who was on the other end of the line? It was fantastic. Crap. It never occurred to me to record the conversation. I could only imagine who she was talking to. No. Everything is fine. The only thing that could have been better is if Simon had been there to watch. I really didn't think I could get him to agree to this. He's so smug. I don't know. Simon is often out of town, but I don't want to feel pressured to hide the affair. Is she really talking to him? I know, thank you. All this would have been impossible without you. I don't think you can have Simon again, do you? She giggled. Nicole? Nobody else caught me. Well, I feel great. Listen, why don't we go shopping? Simon is in no position to complain about me spending money. What do you say? Great. I'll call you and Simon when I'm ready to leave. Carol hung up and headed to the bathroom. She was friendly with Nicole, considering that she also betrayed Carol. Couldn't she have a date without Nicole? Panties! Nicole packed my bag. She must have put them there on purpose. Will you catch me again? I'm not a stupid person. No doubt many of you will disagree now that you understand the situation in which I find myself. In fact, it turned out that they took me for a fool. I didn't think I could get the whole story just by asking Carol. If I want to succeed, I need to plan everything carefully. I spent the whole day preparing. I saw Carol's car pull up to the house just before 5.30. I immediately picked up the phone and dialed the number. Hello? Nicole, there's something wrong with Carol. I need your help. Come right now. What's happened? What? I hung up. Melodramatic, of course. But I wanted her to help me uncover the truth. 
and I had to convince her to come. I heard the key turn in the back door lock. Carol's hands were full. She placed the bags on the kitchen table. You look awfully serious for someone who's about to have a good evening. Carol couldn't be happier with her situation, even if she won the lottery. Come here, sit down. We need to talk. What kind of crap is this? You're fooling me, and I should come and talk. Your actions were as wrong as mine. We did discuss what I did, didn't we? Now that you've had your revenge, we'll talk about what I need to move on. Firstly, did you use condoms? She blushed. She paused. There's no point in telling obvious lies at this point. She was Carol, as always. The best defense is a good attack. Why do you think I didn't use condoms? I didn't find anything. I could wash them off. She would have made a great politician. I didn't find the packaging. Did you wash it away too? Now that evasion was not practical, she changed tactics. You didn't use condoms with Nicole. How do you know that he is healthy? I asked. She answered not quickly enough. Looks like I'm going to be unlucky today. If Bob didn't have to use condoms with my wife, then I'm not going to. Are you healthy? They checked me. Until you are checked, you are on your own. Bastard. A very sharp argument. How long have you been planning this? What do you mean? I started after I found out about you and Nicole. You found someone surprisingly quickly. I'm very attractive. Besides the fact that it was your fantasy, why did I need to look? So that you learn your lesson. What kind of lesson is this? So that you never fool me again. She was starting to worry. And how come I didn't learn this? Didn't I know how much I hurt you? Wasn't I disgusted with myself for my lack of self-control? Aren't I hurt enough by what you're doing? And by the fact that you're planning to do this to me? How could I have learned this lesson better? She didn't answer. There was no reasonable answer. Who was he? Just someone I know from work. How did you manage to persuade Bob so quickly? How long have you been flirting? He was just... attracted to me. I spoke to him on Wednesday. You said, Hey Bob, are you doing anything on Friday? I would like you to spend the night at my house, having sex with me in my marital bed. Without preamble? He's a really nice guy to say yes to right away. His name is Frank, and it wasn't like that at all. I have to tell you, Carol, that I have collected some evidence in this situation. Be very careful not to lie. It was disgusting and vile to deceive me in this way. I think I can survive this, but if I feel like I can't trust you, there's no reason for us to restore this marriage. Since you don't know what exactly I know, you're taking a big risk if you don't tell me the truth. You mean you'll leave me after what you did? I'm saying I'll leave you if I can't trust you after what you did. If I can't trust you, how do I know you won't kill me in my sleep? I would never do this. But the question is, how far will you go? I saw Nicole's car pull up. Did you conspire with Nicole to make me cheat on you? You are crazy. Maybe. But you didn't answer my question. And don't forget that I have proof. Also, I'm going to ask Nicole about this. She doesn't want to talk to you. Just in time. The doorbell rang. Here she is. Why did you call her after you were done with Bob? Frank, I don't... I heeded towards the door. Shouldn't we look for another answer? How did you agree to go shopping with her? Well, yes. I called her about this. I mean, I didn't call to talk about this. Nicole rushed past me into the living room. Carol, are you okay? Simon said. There's something wrong with you. I didn't give her a chance to answer. Nicole... When did you and Carol start planning this? Carol intervened. What are you trying to pull out? Carol, calm down. We're going to get to the bottom of this. It's not like that light was to be kept. You have the nerve to drag this into our house. If we don't solve this problem, this will just be your house. You can have sex to your heart's content here, without me. Either my sarcasm or this prospect seem to be enough to calm her down for a moment. What's wrong with Carol is that we're having a critical conversation about marriage. Nicole, when did you start planning this? Plan what? I do not understand what you're saying. 
How did your panties get into my suitcase? It was just a mistake. I put them in the wrong place. Do you really think I'm that stupid? I admit that I was an incredible fool in this whole thing for a while, but I'm not that stupid. Only one pair? Well, Nicole didn't have a ready answer. How is it? I pretended to look at my notes. None of this would have been possible without you. They both looked surprised. Didn't it occur to you that I could tap phones? When did you start planning this? I didn't care who answered. The silence seemed to last forever, although in reality it was probably less than a minute. I was waiting. Justified or not, I had a feeling that if I spoke first I would lose the advantage and the truth forever. About five months ago, Nicole answered, her voice barely above a whisper. Nicole, Carol said. Did you hear? He knows. We'll only make things worse if we lie. Nicole is doing the right thing. I can't guarantee that I'll stay with you no matter what I find out, but I guarantee that I will leave if I don't find out the truth. What was the plan? I have to get you to seduce me and then leave some evidence for Carol. Nicole! Does Carol still think she can hide it all, or is she just shocked to hear it out loud? Carol, isn't it clear now that I get it? She, just like Annie, knew where to find me. She left evidence, as I now understand, in an obvious way. Let it all come out. Did she help you with this information, Nicole? Yes. So, Carol, you and Nicole had been planning for five months to have Frank, and not long before that you came up with a plan. Now she was calm and behaved humbly. Yes. Why such a complicated plan? Why not just change it while I was out of town and hide it from me? I thought you'd leave me if you found out. Is this better? I didn't think you'd find out. Why did you do that? I didn't think you'd find out. And this is the reason? Frank has been flirting with me for a long time. It made me feel attractive. You left, and he was always there. He paid me a lot of attention. He kept trying to win me over, even though I turned him down over and over again. It made me feel special. Being hunted was so exciting. It made me remember how much fun I had playing on the field before we met. I guess I finally let him get to me. I wanted to see if I was missing anything. I wanted to feel the thrill of being desired. You didn't do anything like that. I was simply overwhelmed with excitement. It was stupid. You could just be secretly cheating, Carol. It would suck, but at least you wouldn't hurt me. I didn't think you'd find out. So you betrayed me by deceiving me with Frank? And you betrayed me by making me think that everything was my fault? It sounds terrible when you say it like that. So you betrayed me twice? Yes. Sorry, honey. But that's not all, is it? These two betrayals are quite bitter to swallow, but they are something I could overcome. But that's not all, is it, Nicole? She shrugged and shook her head. Did I seduce you, Nicole? Well, of course. Don't you remember? She said this with sincere conviction. No, that's why I'm asking. I only drank one drink, but in the end I felt very bad. I remember bits of the evening, but not much. Did you do something to me? It could have been Percocet. And what else? What are you talking about? Asked Nicole. What did Carol mean when she said, I don't think you can have Simon again, do you? What does it mean to get Simon again? Carol gasped. Nicole lowered her eyes. Her shoulders slumped. She didn't answer right away. When she did this, her voice was barely audible. GHB, I only gave you half the dose so it wouldn't hurt you. For what? Carol knew from this woman's report that you couldn't be seduced. Carol hired an agency that checks whether spouses are faithful. That redhead would have slept with you and Carol would have gotten her vindication. But you didn't. So Carol knew she would have to decide differently. Whose idea was GHB? They looked at each other. Carol was silent, but blushed. Carol managed to get something, Simon. I want you to know how sorry I am. I started to regret it the next morning when you didn't touch me. You were more upset about what you thought was your mistake than what Carol would do to you. I felt like crap and didn't want you to know what I did, so I just played along. Please forgive me. I'm really sorry. Her tone confirmed the feelings she was expressing. Carol? Looking back, I don't see anything good in it. I don't know what I was thinking. 
This is not even remotely an apology. I'm really sorry. I didn't want you to find out. So this is what you regret? No, that's not what I meant. If you don't find out, it won't hurt you. I didn't mean to hurt you. I just let myself get carried away. I'm so sorry, Simon. I promise this will never happen again. I will never give you a reason to doubt me. Do you understand what you did? You helped rape me and made me believe it was all my fault. I don't even know what the worst thing about all of this is. I can probably forget that you decided and planned to use Frank. Everyone makes mistakes, even big ones. But that wasn't enough for you. Do you even understand what you've done? You made me become an adulterer. For me, this may be even worse than the fact of rape. This time you pushed your ideas over the edge. Don't leave me, Simon. I will do everything to make amends. I love you more than anything in the world. More than anything in the world except you and what you want. I'm going to leave, Carol. My lawyer will contact you. Don't leave me, Simon, Carol said. I don't know what I'll do without you. I'll do anything. This is the most truthful thing you said today. I went out. She followed me into the bedroom and continued to beg while I packed my things. Anger and resentment prevented me from hearing what she was saying. Maybe she was sincere. Maybe she was just sad about her loss. But it didn't matter. I couldn't stay. She's gone too far. Carol, after the way you treated me, I decided to take revenge. Whatever you want, everything you need, just don't leave me. I gave her hope that after I did everything I set out to do, she could bring me back. It was cruel to let her think that way. At that moment, this thought made me happy. I was a bastard. The pleasure I took then in insulting her now repulses me. But at least I had time to heal. I left her crying. Maybe she really loved me. But it didn't matter. The price was too high. I wanted revenge. I wanted her to suffer the same way I suffered. I wanted the family to know what a ruthless, lying narcissist she is. I wanted the people she worked with to know the kind of betrayal she was willing to bring to work. I wanted my friends to know what she was capable of doing to her longtime lover and companion, and how willing she was to compromise her best friend to get it. Could they be next? I wanted all these people to avoid her. Just the thought of her suffering was cathartic. But after the rush of emotions caused by these thoughts, I wondered what might happen. As for accusing her of rape, without a confession it would be almost impossible. Even then, Nicole could end up in jail, and I didn't want that. If the trial begins, I will become the object of public ridicule. The worst part is that even if I could bring all this suffering to Carol, what would it mean to me? A person who enjoys his own life so little that he only gets pleasure from seeing others suffer? If I took action to make her suffer, I might lose more respect for myself as a man than I would gain from her suffering. I had unfinished business. I watched the tape in the living room. Come in, Frank. Oh, baby, I'm so glad you finally decided to do this. Well, of course you were persistent. You're flattering the girl. I didn't need to see anything anymore. At least she told the truth here. That slimy bastard stalked my wife until he succeeded. This did not mitigate her disgusting behavior but it deserved some retribution. I called Carol's office and asked to see Frank. Luckily, there was only one Frank. Frank, this is Simon Newsom. I just came from the health department and was told that I was required by law to warn any sexual partners of Carol or I that I had contracted chlamydia from her. You better get checked, man. He spluttered, swore, and called her a damn bitch. Of course, he'll know he's okay, but I'm not done with him yet. A week later, I was waiting in the parking lot when he went to get his car. I walked right up to him and lunged at him as he approached the car, slamming him onto the hood. Hello, Frank, it's Simon Newsom again. I pressed down on it, holding my breath. You bastard. Carol had nothing. Am I the bastard? You stalked my wife, convinced her to have sex with you, ruined our marriage, and I'm a bastard? I continued to press him either because he found it difficult to breathe, let alone speak, or because he had nothing to say, he remained silent. You're lucky this time, Frank. You didn't catch anything and you're alive. Your next husband may decide to beat you to a pulp or kill you. I probably won't kill you, although I haven't decided that for sure. 
See you, Frank. Or not. I think I've succeeded in sounding threatening. I hoped he would be worried for a while longer. But it didn't matter. I told the truth. The next guy could just kill him without a second thought. I felt better. Such revenge did not diminish me. I forgave Nicole. She showed real remorse. We even became friends. Carol kept calling, but two months passed before I answered her call. Carol, I'm actually not very interested in talking to you. I just wanted to tell you that I have decided to forgive you. I can't say whether you deserve it or not, but you can take me off your conscience. Does this mean that we have a chance to be together again? I forgive you, Carol, but I don't think I can forget. I can't imagine that I'll ever be able to trust you. I will never give you a reason to doubt me again. What happened is enough. Please. I cannot do it. Goodbye. I hung up without waiting for an answer. I spoke without any malice. I just didn't want to risk my peace of mind. I spent a significant part of my life with her, and most of it was very good. I sincerely hoped that she would be happy, but I was not interested in that. If I never hear anything about her life again, I'll be fine. I spoke to Carol again. She called from a new number. Hello, Simon. Carol, we have nothing to talk about. Just give me a minute and listen. That's all I want. I thought a lot about my behavior, especially after you said you forgave me. I could never find the words to adequately describe how badly I behaved. Not only was I willing to risk our relationship over something useless, I was willing to rub your nose in it. I have no idea how I could have done this and I'm really sorry. I'm not asking you to take me back. They wouldn't take me back after I got in. What I did would be a shame if I did it to a stranger. That I could do this to someone I love, and even worse, to someone who loved me, fills me with disgust. I know this doesn't excuse my behavior, but I needed to give you a sincere apology. I know how empty and useless my apologies were at that time. I understand now. I hope this is of some value to you. After about 10 to 15 seconds, I came to the conclusion that she was finished. Not only did she say the right things, but she seemed sincere. I didn't realize it until now, but I guess I needed to hear them. Thank you, Carol. We both had nothing to say and ended the conversation. Some time later, Nicole told me, without meaning to, that Carol was unhappy. She rarely goes out. They don't even date anymore. It's a shame, of course. But that's not my problem. I had what I originally wanted, Carol's unhappiness. It didn't bring satisfaction. I loved her, but I probably could have guessed everything from the very beginning. The totality of all her virtues and qualities distracted me from a character flaw that was serious enough to allow her to abandon marriage for the sake of fantasy. I no longer date stubborn women like her. I'm looking for a woman with a kind heart. I also change my profession. Now I stay at home almost all the time. I hope someday there will be someone to stay home with. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.